I'm Ruth Dutton. Hi, I'm Aaron Williams. Hi, I'm Brandon Alexander. Hi, I'm Kelvin Dutton. Hello, I'm Lyndon Sincere. We are your Spice Math Tutors. You won't believe it's just math. just math. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Spice Math. Our topic for today is a continuation of sequence of numbers. Our objectives are for you to be able to identify patterns in sequences of numbers and to determine subsequent terms in a sequence by using the respective patterns. What you need to know before we begin, I want you to remember the definition I gave you for sequence of numbers previously. And a sequence of numbers is a list of numbers that follow a mathematical rule or pattern. Last time, we established the big question. The big question again is, what is the pattern? You have to first of all analyze the terms given in the sequence and identify a particular pattern that governs the, the terms, the subsequent terms. For today, we will look at four patterns. Triangular numbers, square numbers, cube numbers, and the Fibonacci type sequences. Triangular numbers can be explained by identifying the patterns using dots. For example, the first triangular number is 1. As I go further, I will now add two dots. So for every subsequent pattern, for every subsequent number, sorry, we would add an additional dot. So the first time I add one, I'm going to add two dots. As I continue, I'll add three dots and then four dots, etc. So the second triangular number we identify to be three. And if a check for you is to ensure I have two dots on this side, two dots on this side, and two dots on this side as well. The next triangular number, I'm now going to add three dots. So the third triangular number is, how many dots do I have? I have one, two, three, four, five, six dots. So the third triangular number is six. We can use a formula to determine triangular numbers. So to find triangular numbers, we use a formula T subscript N is equal to n open parentheses n plus 1 all divided by 2. Now if, if I wanted to determine what is the second triangular number and the second triangular number we found it to be 3, I would use the formula, I can use the formula to show that the second triangular number is indeed 3 by saying T subscript 2, the reason I have 2 here because I'm trying to find the second triangular number. This would be equal to 2, open parentheses, 2 plus 1, close parentheses, all divided by 2. Let's work it out, which is equal to 2 plus 1 gives me 3, 2 times 3 divided by 2. And 2 times 3 gives me 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we found here that the second triangular number is indeed 3. Right? Another pattern that we'll look at today as well would be for square numbers. And square numbers we are simply multiplying each number by itself. So again, a formula that would denote squared numbers would be equal to n to the power of 2, or n squared. So what is the first squared number? 
first squared number. So S subscript 1 is equal to 1 squared. And 1 squared means I'm multiplying 1 times itself. And 1 times 1 gives me 1. So we can establish that the first squared number is 1. If I want to determine what is the second squared number, I would substitute where I see n2 because I'm trying to find the second squared number. So s subscript 2 is equal to 2 squared. And 2 squared means I'm multiplying 2 by itself, which gives me 4. So the second squared number is 4. Let's now try and find the third squared number. The third squared number, again, I'm going to substitute 3 for n. So s subscript 3 is equal to 3 squared. And 3 squared means I'm going to multiply 3 by itself. And that gives me 9. So the third squared number is 9. Are you getting the flow? Now, the third pattern I want us to look at would be cube numbers. Cube numbers, which I would denote as capital C subscript N, is equal to N to the power of 3, or in other words, we say N cube. And what N cube means is that I'm going to multiply N by itself three times. So if I want to identify what is the first cube number, I'm going to have C subscript 1, and that is equal to 1 cube. And what 1 cube means is that I'll multiply 1 by 1 by 1, three times. And 1 times 1 times 1 gives me 1. So my first cube number is 1. If I want to find my second cube number, C subscript 2, this is equal to 2 to the power of 3, or what you say, 2 cube. And 2 cube means that I'm multiplying 2 by itself three times. Two twos are four, and then four times two is eight. So my second cube number is eight. And if I continue, let's try the third. The third cube number is C subscript three, which is equal to three cube. And three cube means I'm multiplying three by itself three times. Three threes are nine, and three by, sorry, three threes are nine, and then nine by three is 27. So my third cube number is 27. Are you getting the hang of that? Now the final pattern that I'm, I'm gonna look at with you today is a nice, it sounds like a little fancy word, this pattern is called the Fibonacci pattern. Now, what happens with the Fibonacci sequence? What we realize, let me show you if we can first of all see a pattern. One, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen. Now, what happens with the Fibonacci sequence? For me to get a subsequent term, I would have to add the two previous terms. So, if I'm, I'm beginning here, from 1, I, they give me this term here as 1. Now, to get the next term, I have two previous terms here. So, to get the next term, I'm going to add 1 plus 1 gives me 2. That's for this term. And then, to get the next term here, I'm going to add the two previous terms. So to get 3, I would have to add 1 plus 2. And then, to get 5, I'm going to add the two previous terms. So to get 5, I'm going to add 2 plus 3. To get 5. Again, as we continue, to get 8, I add 5 plus 3 to get 8. And to get 13, I add 8 plus 5 to get 13. All right? 
So in order for us to determine subsequent terms, we would have to add the two previous terms in the sequence, for the Fibonacci sequence. Now that we looked at four additional patterns, let's try to find the next two terms in the following sequences. You give it a try, and I'll try it. Now let's compare what you got to what I got. For the first sequence, I realized that my pattern is I had triangle numbers. Now, we could have done it this way. For every term, I'm going to add one more than I previously added. So 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 plus 5 is 15. And 15 plus 6 is 21. If I wanted, however, I could have used the formula that I gave you before. This is the first term, the second term, third, fourth, 
I want to find the fifth and sixth terms. So in using the formula t subscript n five, sorry, which for which I'm trying to find the fifth triangle number is equal to five open parentheses five plus one close parentheses divided by two. Five plus one gives me six, and five sixes are thirty. Thirty divided by two gives me fifteen. So my fifth triangle number is fifteen. My sixth triangle number, as I use the formula, I got it to be 21. The second sequence, in analyzing the terms given, I realize that I now have square numbers. One squared gives me one. One times one is one. Two squared gives me four. Two by two is four. Three squared gives me nine. Three by three is nine. 4 squared gives me 16, 4 by 4 is 16, 5 squared gives me 25, 5 fives are 25. So this term is going to be 6 squared, and 6 by 6 is 36. And the next term is going to be 7 squared. 7 by 7 is 49. For my third sequence, I have 1, 8, and 27. I realize that I now have cube numbers. One cube is one by one by one, which gives me one. Two cube is two by two by two, which gives me eight. Three cube, which is three by three by three, gives me 27. So my next term is going to be four cube. Four cube means four by four, which gives me 16 times 4, which would give me 64. The next term here would then be 5 cubed. And 5 cubed means I'm going to multiply 5 by 5, which gives me 25. And 25 by 5 is 125. For my fourth sequence, I have 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. Now, when I looked at this, I realized this resembles the Fibonacci sequence. And the Fibonacci sequence, to get the next term, we add the two previous terms. So, I go from 1. I have nothing to add 1 to. So, I just have 1 here. Now, to get the next term, I now go and add the two previous terms. 1 plus 1 gives me 2. To get this term, 2 plus 1 gives me 3. To get this term, 3 plus 2 gives me 5. To get 8... I have 3 plus, 3 plus 5 gives me 8. So therefore, to get the next term, I would have to add 5 plus 8 to give me 13. And then to get the final term, I would have to add 8 plus 13, which would give me 21. Did you get that? Very good. Now it's time for you to do it on your own. Give it a try.
Let's compare answers. For the first sequence, what did you get? I realized that I know square odd numbers. One squared, three squared, five squared. So therefore, this top would be seven squared, which is seven by seven to get 49. And this term would now be nine squared. Nine by nine is 81. For the second sequence, I realize that I'm gonna cube odd numbers now. One cube is one by one by one, which gives me one. Three cube, three by three by three, which gives me 27. Five cube, five by five by five, 125. So therefore seven cube, seven by seven by seven, is gonna give me 343. Nine cube, nine by nine by nine, is gonna give me 729. For the third sequence, if we realize, for me, as I go along, for me to get this term here, I added five plus nine gives me 14. Adding the two previous terms to get the next term. 23, I had to add nine and 14 to get 23. So therefore, to get the next term, I would now add 14 plus 23, which gives me 37. And to get the final term, I add 23 plus 37, which gives me 60. How do you feel having conquered these questions? Knowing that you were, you were able to look them in their eyes and say to them, I got you. Must be a good feeling. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Spice Math. See you next time. You won't believe it's just math. Come on. You won't believe it's just math.